Now, a lot of people always ask how accurate are these tests? They don't wanna do any of the testing. Ash, what is wrong? As I'm sure you can tell from the title, today we're, no, Ash. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited about today's video because it's over a subject that I realize a lot of people don't have very much information on. It can be very overwhelming and they don't really know what it means. I've encountered this personally with patients in my office. Anyway, I cannot wait to break it down and explain it to you guys. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about prenatal genetic testing. In case you are new here, I am Dr. Ali. I am an OBGYN here on YouTube. I cover all things from women's health, pregnancy, periods, you name it. I am so excited that you're watching this video. In case you aren't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and become part of this little YouTube family. Okay, so a little bit of an intro. Let's say you're newly pregnant your doctor's office calls you, sets you up with your first appointment. Sometimes because of COVID, now they're doing these appointments over the phone, especially if you're early on in your pregnancy. But say you get a phone call and they're asking you all these questions about your past medical history, your previous pregnancies, if you have any health issues, C-sections, anything like that. Then they ask you to see if you're interested in doing any genetic testing for this pregnancy. Now, maybe you're like, I don't know what that means. A lot of people think this is where you get a big needle and they stick it in your belly and get some of the animal fluid. Is that something we do? Yes. But is that what they're talking about? No. Then you have all of these questions about what's the best test, which one's more accurate, or I don't have a family history of someone with a genetic condition. Do I need to do this test? Why is it offered? All of these questions come up and they're all very normal to have. So in today's video, I'm gonna break it down for you so that you understand your options and why we offer them to every single person. All right, so without a further ado, let's jump into the video. Mm -mm. Let's start with definitions. So what is prenatal genetic testing? These are tests that can be done to give you and your partner information on whether or not this fetus or baby carries any sort of genetic condition. Now, there are thousands of genetic conditions out there, so are we able to test for every single one? No, but we can test for a number of them. So what are genetic disorders? Genetic disorders are something that affects someone's genes or chromosomes. An example of this is aneuploidy. Aneuploidy means that there's a change to the number in a person's chromosomes. Down syndrome is a condition that falls into the category of aneuploidy. That is because these babies carry an extra chromosome, specifically chromosome 21. So occasionally you might hear Down syndrome also be called trisomy 21 because there's three copies of chromosome 21. There's other conditions where maybe a chromosome is missing. And then there's also genetic conditions where there's a mutation in a certain amino acid or something is mutated. Things like cystic fibrosis or sickle cell anemia. But when you get pregnant, as I'm sure you know, obviously there's cells from the mother and obviously there's cells from the father that are combining. So these cells mixing, they're going to form a brand new individual fetus baby that has its own set of chromosomes. So what tests are offered? I wanna break this down into two different categories, screening tests and diagnostic tests. So a prenatal screening test is just that, a screening test. It can tell us the chances of this baby having a chromosome or a genetic disorder. A diagnostic test is going to tell us with more certainty that this individual fetus or baby has the condition. It diagnoses them with the condition. When you're comparing the two tests, screening tests are usually less invasive and diagnostic tests are more invasive. A diagnostic test is something like an amniocentesis where we do place a needle in the belly and get some of the amniotic fluid surrounding the baby. There's also something called chorionic villus sampling where we get a part of the placenta and send that off to testing. Those are diagnostic testing. Screening tests are usually gonna be using two things, ultrasound and then maternal blood, so blood from the mom. Then you might've heard of something called PGD or pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. This is the test that's offered to couples that are going through IVF or in vitro fertilization. This is mainly seen in couples where you know that the mom has a genetic condition or the dad, or maybe they carry a genetic condition throughout their families. So they know that by them having a baby together, that 
baby is already at an increased risk of having a genetic condition. So with pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, before transferring the embryo, when you're going through the process of IVF, we're able to sample that embryo and look at the genes and test it specifically for XYZ condition. So which test should you do? Should you do the screening or should you do the diagnosis? Ultimately, this is going to be your decision. It's going to be a conversation that you should have with yourself and your partner. Obviously, if there's a known genetic condition that runs in your family, maybe you kind of err on the side of doing a diagnostic test, or maybe you have to do the route of IVF and PGD testing. Everyone's going to be completely different, but I recommend having that conversation with your partner, family, also have the conversation with your doctor or possibly a genetic counselor. Ultimately, it's going to be your choice and it's a very personal choice. One question that I typically like to ask my patients is say we find out that you have a baby that carries a genetic condition something like Down syndrome or trisomy 18, trisomy 13, would you want to continue on with that pregnancy? Would it be something where you may consider termination? These are all gonna be difficult decisions and maybe your beliefs play a role into it. And whatever you decide, again, it's your decision and you should be able to decide for yourself what you want to do. And some people decide that they don't wanna do any of the genetic testing. They don't care to know if their baby has an increased risk or possibly a diagnosis. To them, it doesn't matter. They will continue on with the pregnancy. So these tests are optional. You don't have to do them. Some people want to just know, just to help them better prepare. If they find out that their baby is an increased risk of having Down syndrome or is diagnosed with Down syndrome, maybe it's something where they want to, you know, purchase books on Down syndrome, how to parent a child with Down syndrome, join a support group, find local community events for children with Down syndrome. Whatever you want to do is going to be your choice. Also a quick side note, you shouldn't feel guilty for whatever decision that you make. Everyone's life and journey is going to be different and what works for you may not work for somebody else. They're very personal decisions and very hard conversations to have. But I want you to know that if ending the pregnancy is something that you would consider, this is more safely done in the first trimester. So it may be better to do some of the earlier testing. All right, now let's go deeper into describing the different screening tests because there's different ones that are offered. So with the screening test, let's divide these into two different categories, a carrier screening test and a prenatal genetic genetic screening. Now the carrier screen is done on the parents. This is something like a blood sample or a saliva sample, and this is going to look to see if the parents are a genetic carrier for a certain condition. Some of the most common ones we see in the United States are things like sickle cell anemia and cystic fibrosis. And this test can be done either during a pregnancy or before. Now let's talk about prenatal genetic screening. I'm gonna break this down into four different tests. First up is the first trimester screen. The first trimester screen has two portions to it blood sample from the mom and the use of an ultrasound. This is typically done between 10 to 13 weeks gestation and the blood that we take from the mother is looking at two different substances and then also combining that with a nuchal translucency test which is done via ultrasound. The nuchal translucency or an NT is going to measure the skin behind the baby's head. We know that if this area is thickened, it can be a sign that the baby has a condition like Down syndrome because we know that these babies, the back of their neck or that nuchal translucency is thicker. So that's the first trimester screen. All right, next up we have the second trimester screen. This is going to look at a quad screen, which again is blood work from the mom where we look at four different substances. This is going to screen for conditions like Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, and neural tube defects. And this this test is typically done between 15 to 22 weeks. This also combines the fetal anatomy scan, which is typically done between 18 and 22 weeks. Next, we have the combined first and second trimester screen. And just like it sounds, it's combining the first trimester screen with the quad screens with all of the ultrasounds. As I'm sure you can tell, these ones are going to be more accurate, but the downside is that you won't get the results until the second trimester. So the fourth prenatal screening test is going to be the cell-free DNA. So let me explain this one. Think about it this way. Now that you're pregnant, you have your blood and baby's blood mixing so we can do this blood work on you and actually isolate fetal cells not actually fetal blood 
but it's more so DNA that we can get from the placenta. So very close to baby's genetic makeup. So by sampling the mother cell, we can isolate these placental cells and check their chromosome. This is going to again check for things like Down syndrome, trisomy 13, trisomy 18. It's gonna be able to tell us the sex of the baby and it can look at also sex chromosome disorders. You can do this test as early as 10 weeks and you get the results within one to two weeks. If the cell-free DNA comes back positive, we do recommend at that point to proceed with a diagnostic test to actually diagnose this baby with a condition. Like I mentioned before, this is something like doing an amniocentesis or a CVS. Now let's quickly review what this means. If the first trimester screen or second trimester screen tests positive, remember that these are screening tests. It's not diagnosing your baby with a condition. It is simply telling us that this baby has a higher chance of having a genetic condition. Typically, if any of these test positive, then you'd sit with your doctor or genetic counselor and see if it's worth it or recommended to proceed with a diagnostic test where we can really diagnose and have more clear information on does this baby have this condition or not. Now, a lot of people always ask how accurate are these tests? Remember, just like with a lot of tests in medicine, it's always possible to have a false positive or a false negative. Every single test is going to be different, so always ask your doctor what they recommend recommend personally for you. When looking at the detection rate for trisomy 21 or Down syndrome, the cell-free DNA is going to be about 99% accurate. The first trimester screen is about 82 to 87% accurate. The quad screen is about 81% accurate. But then when you do things like the combined testing with the first trimester and the second trimester, obviously these percentages are going to change. So again, best to just sit down with your doctor and figure out what's gonna be best for you. And obviously everyone's past medical history is different. So if you have a strong family history of a genetic condition, those numbers will likely change versus someone who has no family history. Ultimately, what I want you guys to take from these video is that this is a very personal decision and you should really be having this conversation with yourself, with your family, with your partners to figure out what's going to be best for you. You should never feel pressure from someone to do one thing versus the other. This is your decision. All right, you guys, and that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys learned something and I hope I kind of made this whole process of prenatal screening tests a little bit easier. I hope that now you can kind of sit down and figure out what test is gonna be best for you. Or maybe you need to schedule an appointment with your doctor to get a little bit more information on what's gonna be best for you. Like I mentioned before, if you're not already, I would love it if you guys would become part of this family. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any one of my videos. I will leave all of my social media links down below. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and my blog. My blog I always write in Spanish and in English. Thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. I will see you all in my next video. I hope you have an amazing week. Always remember to be kind and show love to everyone around you. Love you guys. Bye.